less than a billionth of a second after the Big Bang. A bubble much smaller than a fraction of an atom forms. This is the universe. It is unimaginably small and unimaginably hot. Within this bubble, the four known forces of nature, gravity, electromagnetism, plus the strong and the weak nuclear forces, are a combined superforce. Gravity suddenly splits off from the superforce as the universe expands. As the universe expands, it cools, which somehow sets off a burst of energy fueling the hyperinflation of the universe, suggested by Alan Guth. This inflation locks in the uniformity of the universe pictured by the WMAP satellite. The universe is still less than a second old when the superforce decays into the separate forces of nature. Roughly three minutes after the Big Bang, the temperature of the universe has dropped to a mere one billion degrees Fahrenheit, cool enough for atomic nuclei to form. The element hydrogen forms. Some hydrogen atoms fuse to create helium, as proposed by Gamow and Alpher. 380,000 years later, and light travels through the darkness. The burst of radiation that Penzias and Wilson found happens now. A billion years after the Big Bang, stars take shape, producing the heavier elements like nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon, as Hoyle predicted. Roughly nine billion years out, matter and gravity combine to form a perfectly typical star. Pressure creates heat at its core. This heat triggers thermonuclear fusion. A star is born. Stellar outflow clears away residual gases. A circumstellar disk of dust remains that eventually accrete into an entourage of planets and moons. One of these lumps of stardust, after being pummeled for eons by residual solar debris, has temperatures warm enough to allow hydrogen dioxide, water, to build up in the atmosphere. Liquid water gathers on the planet's surface. Underwater, mysterious chemical reactions ultimately form life. 13.7 billion years after the Big Bang, our universe is now 156 billion light years across. The sky is full of stars. Our solar system has eight planets, more or less. The third planet is nearly covered in carbon-based life forms. Some are just realizing what infinitely small specks they are in the grand scheme of things. If you don't understand this process, that's okay. It's the culmination of millions of human brains struggling for thousands of years to figure out how the universe began and where man fits within it. It's enough to overwhelm any one human brain. If I take seriously the idea that my brain was evolved to be able to throw rocks and pick bananas and stuff, it's pretty remarkable that we humans would be able to figure out much about physics, figure out much about things that didn't have survival value to our ancestors. Yet I think it's quite stunning how well we humans have been able to make progress in this regard and, and not go completely bananas in the process. This is our story of everything, our world, our solar system, our universe and how it all began. This is what we think we know. It's a work in progress. The script is still being written. But let's see how it ends.
New York City. A beautiful but unremarkable autumn day, like thousands before it and thousands to come, until there aren't any more autumn days. Imagine for a moment traveling into the future for billions of years. Past the end of human civilization and the lives of all living creatures on Earth. Imagine we are five billion years into the future. The sun is running out of the nuclear fuel that gives it fire. As it cools, it expands and reddens coming closer and closer to Earth. It swallows up Mercury and Venus. Water on Earth evaporates and Earth becomes molten again. When the fuel is gone, the sun's core ultimately contracts as it transforms from a red giant to a white dwarf. The expanding outer layers of the sun, called a planetary nebula, drift into space as ghostly shrouds of glowing gas. The planets that survive this process, the outer ones like Saturn and Neptune, are utterly changed by it. The planetary nebula blows away their gassy atmospheres leaving small, rocky, and metallic cores behind. The distant planets, no longer held by the less massive sun's gravity, drift into the vastness of space. Travel billions of years after that, and all remaining heat from the sun has radiated out, and its small, dark surface is the same frigid temperature as the rest of space. The sun is now a black dwarf. Now, billions of years later, propelled by a mysterious and only recently discovered dark energy, the universe expands ever faster, flying apart everywhere. On a grand scale and at a molecular one, Expansion overwhelms gravity. Everything rips apart. Not just galaxies, solar systems, and stars, but even atoms. Finally, matter itself is torn asunder. This is the big rip, the big rest in peace for our universe, the legacy of dark energy, that stuff we still haven't figured out.